Hey guys, welcome back. Got the apprentice with me again today. Hello. Um, just doing an inlet manifold clean. So I thought I'd give the old uh, heavy duty oven cleaner a tr uh, spray. A spray. Thought I'd give the heavy duty oven cleaner a try. I've um, never done it before because normally I just clean it all at work. But yeah, um, as you can see, it's what we're dealing with so far. Nice. All the crud and crap all inside of these. Um, so basically I'm just gonna, when other people done it, they recommend like washing it or pressure cleaning it first then spraying this on, but um, I don't really have room for a pressure cleaner. And I don't know if I've still, have I got shit on my face still? Yeah, you're a mess. Yeah, so I was, uh, I cleaned the other manifold already to see how it'd go. And um, <laughs> I picked the tub up to get rid of it and then I dropped it and it <laughs> splashed in my face. So I'm pretty clean compared to what I was, but um, yeah, so all we got to do is just fill all this crap, all the inlet manifolds and stuff up for with a heap of foam, let it sit for five minutes, and then I give it a little scrub with a little scrubby. I don't know what you call them, a loofah. <laughs> right, so I've sprayed like half a can into um, into that intake, so I'm just gonna leave it yeah for five minutes. That shit's pretty bad, so... Yeah, don't breathe while you're doing it. <clears throat> Make sure you're not upwind like I was. Because it burns. Learn from my mistakes. Yeah, we'll see you in five minutes. Alright, so now comes the fun part. Just gonna... I'll just use this little scrubby brush. You're not gonna get all of it out, obviously. Um, but it ended up being pretty good on the other side, so. So you have it so for $12 you got those two cans I mean it's not amazingly it's not the perfect intake but it's like a lot better than it was so um, I think we need a better torch oh, it's than before, oh yeah that's so, better um, yeah it cost $12 so these cans were six, $6 each <laughs> you just spray them on leave them for 5 minutes and then they use the scrubby brush they cost $2 I uh, did buy a tub, but I'm sure you guys have a tub lying around. Look at that poor lawn. I just don't happen to have one lying around anymore because it's full of Land Rover parts, all of them. So. And he's nicked all my buckets. Nicked all your buckets. So yeah, I think um turned out pretty good. Obviously, make sure that you get all the air, uh, all the air, all the um moisture out of it before you put it back on. So I've blown it out as best I can, and now I'm just going to leave it on the bin over there to dry out properly. So. Alright, so while those intake manifolds are drying, I'm just going to replace the fuel pump with the one off my engine, as well as the crankcase vent um, crossover. I'm going to remove the glow plugs and oil seal and oil cooler as well, and replace them with new, and change the crankcase vent seals. Um, once all that's back together and on, then we can put these inlet manifolds on and keep the dust and crap off of this engine, which is very important.
So when you guys end up with an oil leak um, that flows down the back of your engine, so down the back and over the bell housing and all that, and it looks like a rocket cover, nine times out of ten, you've either pinched your O-ring while you're doing your, um, your service on the filter and it's leaking into this V gully. And what it does is it leaks down into here until it fills up and when it fills up it overflows down the back and comes down the back of your, your V drain so your, it could be a slow oil leak um, but over time it just keeps building up and up and up and then before you know it you've got a mess on the floor down and down the back of your engine so nine times out of ten that's um, that's if it's just happened after a service it's because you've spilled oil into here and it's just kept on um, building up but a lot of the time your oil cooler gasket leaks so um, this gasket here um, it's real common for these to leak and then the other thing is as well is these are a two-part cooler so in between this section here there's an o-ring which they don't sell um, that's what keeps your coolant and diesel uh, separate as well as your oil so um, they're about 300, 350 to 450 dollars to just buy one so if you're ever doing this job where you pull the oil cooler out to change the gasket just put a new oil cooler in it's not worth the hassle you'll find out um, how difficult they are to do on an engine they're real tight uh, to do them on the engine you can keep the inlet manifolds on but you do have to pull that crankcase vent plastic thing at the back of the engine and your, your third, uh, coolant crossover at the front um, but then yeah it's just really tight to get that crankcase vent separator out because the firewall and the comes over the top of the engine so it just gets really really tight um, so it's not worth doing the job twice just buy the cooler to begin with uh, now that's out I'm just gonna clean up in here pop these seals put new seals inside of them and then um, focus on removing the fuel pump. Alright, so the uh, new glow plugs are in. They're supposed to be torqued to around 8 to 11 newton meters. Um, I don't have my deep 8 mil socket, I don't know where it's gone. So I've done it by feel, but I'm pretty confident. I had, I've nipped them up. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to hit these crankcase vent seals in now while it's all open, and then cover them back up again, and then I'll focus on the fuel pump.
All right, so that's the uh, fuel pump switched over onto this engine. Just gonna torque the manning bolts, so they're uh, 19 to 26 Newton meters. And then another important thing is as well with all your high pressure fuel lines and stuff is not to over tighten them. Um, obviously, it's pretty hard to torque them unless you've got the attachment for your torque wrench, which I don't. I just go off fuel, but general, general rule of thumb is like for the spec for this manual is 23 to 30 Newton meters. So it's just a light nip. Um, don't over tighten them, otherwise you ruin the, the manning face. And technically OEM re recommend when you remove a high pressure fuel line to replace it with new. Obviously I don't, I just bag everything straight away. There's very fine tolerances with them. So I'll give them a clean out of brake cleaner first. Make sure your face is really clean and then I uh, put them all on. And then it's obviously yeah, important if there's any supporting clamps on the the fuel line at all to, to put them on as well because any vibrations will also crack that line too so they put them there for a reason that's um definitely one thing i don't skimp on when it comes to fuel systems is any clamps which were put on there so yeah just going to torque these 23 to uh 18 to 26 newton meters and then um i'll start putting all the timing cover and stuff on the back Uh, so the GoPro died on me, but um, basically same as the front cams, it's 80 newton meters plus 90 degrees, but not to exceed 210 newton meters. Um, I just done 80 newton meters and then hit it with my rattle gun. I got only got 70 degrees on this, but it'll still be good enough. Um, uh, yeah, and then to put the belt on, put the tensioner on first, leave the, the tensioner pin locked in. Slide the belt over your camshaft pulley first, keeping it tight up the top. Pull it over and keep it tight going clockwise. Once you've got it over this, make sure it's all seated nicely and pull your pin. Uh, this bolt's 24 to 26 Newton meters. And it's very important to these engines not to over tighten stuff. Because um, they're only brittle and shit, so just make sure if something's supposed to be only tighten to a maximum of 26 newton meters you only do it to 26 newton meters you don't go berserk all right guys sorry i know i've been doing much talk in this video but i've been doing a lot of um thinking it's quite uh strenuous making sure you get everything right so um yeah i'm just going to slap this oil cooler on there and uh once the oil cooler's on i'm probably just going to leave the crankcase vent off for now put the inlet manifolds on or well, the glow plug harness and the inlet manifolds um, and then I'm probably gonna run the engine harness because I think it's gonna be hard to get to these plugs once um, everything's in place I'll see what happens I'll see what it looks like when it's sat in there if it looks like I'm gonna be able to get to it all right then I'll then I'll um, fiddle the harness and stuff afterwards otherwise I'll do it now
so um, looking a little bit more assembled now which is nice to see uh, if you haven't seen the alloy crossover before this is the one that I always refer to and um, for me the $700 that it costs is far outweighs the fact that you don't have to worry about it ever again um, I did find with the crankcase crossover um, I'm just gonna sit it there for now just to keep shit out of it but um, it is actually gonna block me trying to plug in the um, fuel pump one of the fuel pump harness plugs so I'm just leaving it in there to keep dust out but not plugging it in properly um, and yeah basically if it's an 8 mil the torque for it's 8 to 11 newton meters that's all you gotta remember that doesn't really vary much um, pretty much build this engine almost on 11 newton meters so all I do is I might just slap a little bit more oil on the cams and stuff and then button her up um, well I've also got to put the back pump on the back of this it did in the manual stipulate that you're supposed to have three bond come out the back of this face here um, it's too late for me so I'm just gonna put a little dollop on the outside anyway it'll be no big deal she'll seal and uh, yeah So that's one side of the manifolds done. It's nice when it looks like a uh, engine again. <laughs> this you can keep some dust and stuff out now. It's easier to cover the holes. I'm going to quickly pop the injectors out of this engine, I think, and um, and pop them straight into here, or clean them up and pop them into here so that I don't have to uh, worry about keeping the dust out of the, the injector um, seals and uh, seats and stuff. But um, yeah, once again, 8 to 11 newton meters, and you would have seen me use 3 bond on corners of any rounded area. That's not stipulated in the manual, that's just something I do because generally whenever a rocker cover leaks, it's always around the cam bearing or, you know, one of those round curved areas. So I always just put a little dollop of 3 bond in each corner, and it just... Um, so I thought I'd just clarify which... Um, cylinder was number two and funnily enough glad I did because I'm used to them being like one two three four five six whereas this is uh, right hand side from the front of the engine one two three and then from the left four five six which um, could catch some people out if you're anything like me so I'm glad I checked that because obviously number two is the one that I'm putting a new injector in so yeah um, I've already been through this return line, but a bit of WD-40 and make sure you, when you're pulling, you pull evenly, otherwise you'll snap the nipple off of this return line. It's about a $300 part. And yeah, if you're doing it in your car, like when you do the oil cooler or something, whew, not nice. Um, so I, the GoPro went flat, I couldn't be bothered waiting for it. So the vacuum pump's now mounted on, just no ring behind there, and then as I said before, at that cam bearing cap behind this, it says in the book to put a dollop of three bond at each point. Um, I've three bonded the whole thing because the O-ring is the original, but it's still protruding a lot. So.
All right, guys, I'm going to um, leave you just on this side. There's no point in me recording the same thing on this side, but basically I'm going to go and grab the injectors off of that and do the exact same thing, apart from number two is going to be a brand new injector. So I'll have to get serial number off of that, serial, serial number off of that, ready to put it into um, the ECU when the car starts up. Hopefully it starts up. But yeah, it's exciting. It was a good day today. I got a fair bit done. So, um, yeah, catch us on the next one. This is actually tomorrow, but I don't know when you guys are going to see it because I'm uh, so taking a lot out of me at the moment. And um, I do apologize because I know I have missed certain things with this video, but it is hard trying to focus on the camera and um, getting my specs and stuff right. I know that I have missed um, running you guys through the cam and float, which uh, if you go on Christian and Vera's video of LR time, they've, they've gone through it pretty well anyway. So um, this for me is more just recording so you guys can see someone else doing the build. But if you want some proper technical information, I'd definitely say they've um, they've done a more informative video than, than this is ever gonna be. So um, at least you guys can sort of see what it's like uh, with sort of um, a bit less workspace and <laughs> just a bit more agricultural. Um, I definitely ideally would have liked to have been building this engine the same way they have, but I just, my current situation and setup just doesn't allow it. So um, yeah, at least you'll, you'll get to see a sort of a not quite as professional way of doing certain tasks. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions when it comes to I've missed a step or something, just go check their video out because it's definitely, yeah, it'll be in there. <laughs> All right, catch us.